Hey YouTube, thanks for clicking. This mini series within the Making Planet series is looking at Earth and adding effects to it. If you haven't already seen them, check out my tutorial on adding a storm and adding location labels based on their real life coordinates. All three of these tutorials take their starting point from Andrew Kramer's excellent Ultra Earth 3D tutorial, which he used to launch Orb, the free plugin designed to make Making Planets easy in After Effects. This Making Planets web series aims to recreate each planet in our solar system using Orb and looking at different techniques as we go. If you can't use Orb for some reason, then check out Making Mercury with CC Sphere, which covers how to use that effect and expressions to get pretty close to what Orb can do. Big apologies to anyone watching each episode of Making, you've heard all this before, but hey, it's YouTube, who knows how people find me. Without further waffle, too late, let's get started. Here's my saved copy of Andrew's Earth. Let's shut off the other orb layers for the moment. They're pretty, but it will speed up previews a little. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is create a central null object and parent everything to it. To do that, I'll go to Layer, New, Null Object. Hit Enter and rename it Earth Null. Next, I'll make it a 3D layer. Hit P to expose the position keyframes, and then I'll switch to the Orb Planet layer. And twirl down the settings until you can see the position settings for the Orb layer. Next, use the Pick Whip to link these to the Earth Null's position. This is probably an unneeded step in this tutorial and I'd need to recreate it for each of the other orb layers, and I should probably link the rotation values too, so that it can use the Earth Null layer to control the planet. Control the planet? Muhaha. Next, I need some more null objects. Select the Earth Null layer, then go to Edit, Duplicate. Hit Enter and rename this Rotation Null, and make it a child of Earth Null. Now, let's duplicate this layer. Edit, duplicate. Hit enter and rename it position null. And make this layer a child of rotation null. Now let's jump back to our orb layer for a moment. In the effects controls, we can see that the radius is currently 200 pixels. Hit P on the position null to expose the position keyframes. And now, let's either change the Y position to 200 or Alt click on the position stopwatch and type square bracket zero comma then use the expression pick whip to select the orb radius, then finish the expression with comma zero square bracket. This means that if I change the radius, I don't have to remember to change this value too. You can see that the position null has jumped downwards. This is where I'd leave it if I was making an aurora australis. For an aurora borealis, I need this value to be negative. Edit the expression and add in minus one times just after the first comma. The first value is the x coordinate, the second is the y and the third is the z coordinate. Spinning the camera around a bit, you can see the layer is right at the top of the globe. Okay, so next we need to add our particles. Create a new solid, which is layer, new, solid. Make it comp size and black. Hit enter and name it particles. Next add in CC Particle World, which is Effect, Simulation, CC Particle World. Go into Guides and turn everything off. Now we have to link our producer with our position null, but CC Particle World doesn't use After Effects 3D coordinate system, so we have to convert it. But the expression for this is complicated and gets screwed up because our position null's position is relative to our rotation null so I need another null object. Duplicate the rotation null, hit enter and rename this particles null. Clear the parent and then alt click on the position stopwatch. Then type L equals this comp dot layer brackets quotes position null quotes bracket semicolon L dot two world brackets L dot anchor point close brackets semicolon. If you take a look at the position values, you can see they are the world coordinates of the position null or where they would be if we could see those. Okay, almost there. Back in CC Particle World, expand the producer section. 
alt click on the position x stopwatch and type the following it's in the description below just copy and paste it follow this up with the y and z expressions Now we have a null object which controls the position of the particles parented to the radius of the planet linked through to a rotation null object which means we can control where on the globe we want the particles to be. Or for this setup we can spin the particle producer in a circle with a bit of a wiggle. If you've made it this far, well done, everything else is housekeeping. In CC particle world, set the producer radiuses to zero. In physics, set the velocity and gravity to zero. You might, when you're finishing, add a little velocity to create movement, but I'll leave it for now. In particle, change the type to faded sphere. We'll actually change this again later. Next, jump to the rotation null, hit R to expose the rotation keyframes, and set keyframes for the Y and Z rotations. Now let's move forward a bit and set the Y to two complete circles, and move the Z to about 30. Playing that, there's quite a bit we need to change. Create a new solid, layer new solid, make it 200 by 200 pixels, hit enter and name it Aurora Tex. Add a fractal noise effect to it. Effect, noise and grain, fractal noise. Set the fractal type to dynamic and really ramp up the contrast to about 190. And drop the brightness to minus 35. Expand the transform settings and uncheck uniform scaling and up the height scale to 800. Now we want some apparent movement. So alt click on the offset turbulence and type square bracket zero comma time times minus 50 square brackets that will leave the x position of the noise at zero but over time move the y position upwards i'm going to get the texture to change over time too using the evolution settings and another expression alt click on that stopwatch and type time times 100. so i have a ribbony texture that moves about but it's black and white Add a tint effect, which is effect color correction tint, and set a really strong green for the white mapping, and set a keyframe. Move forward to four seconds and set another. Now jump back to two seconds, change the color to a really bluey blue expression time again alt click on the white color stopwatch but instead of typing let's use the preset expressions click on the arrow and go to property loop out type equals circle there's loads of expressions here to explore this will let after effects cycle through the three keyframes continuously now we have our aurora texture turn off its visibility and switch back to our cc particle world in the particle settings, change the type to textured faded disk. Expand the texture controls and set the texture to be our Aurora text layer. In After Effects CC, you can change the source to effects and masks, but if you're using an older version, you'll have to pre-comp the Aurora text layer. Set both rotation settings to zero, set the texture time to from start and the transfer mode to add. Set the birth colour to white and the death colour to black so they don't interfere with the tint. Jump back up to the birth rate and reduce this down to 0.1 and up the longevity to 10. And now for final touches. On the rotation null Z rotation, alt click and add the wiggle expression. Wiggle brackets 2 comma 5 close brackets. Twice a second, this will change the value by up to 5 degrees. 
and finally change the particle layers transfer mode to add. Depending how long the shot is I could add more Y rotations and keyframe the Z back to the start. I could have used expressions for this too but they're the same ones as elsewhere and I didn't want to bore you. But that's it, all done. Remember this effect is on the top of the orb layers, so it will look wrong if you look at it from a point where the earth is meant to obscure the effect. I could have made the particles smaller in the particle settings, and decreasing the rotation null's maximum Z rotation would have kept the aurora closer to the arctic circle. For the teaser I had both auroras on at one point. To do that, duplicate the particle layer and the particle null and position null layers, and change the expressions as appropriate but it is possible to run both north and south poles at the same time. You know, for three mini tutorials I've waffled on about as long as I normally would. Apologies, I'm trying to keep these under 10 minutes. In the next video, Mars, and I'll be looking at a hack to generate shadows of its moons. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and if you like what I'm doing please comment below and share, share, share.